Hello, my name is Boris Zaidinir. We'll talk about one issue of supportive care in cancer. With the improvement of scientific and technological level, cancer diagnosis and treatment technology has been well developed. The survival rate of patients with cancer has increased and the mortality rate has decreased. 7.8 million women around the world were living with breast cancer. Therefore, the life quality of patients is receiving more and more attention. As an important component of life quality, cognitive function decline in cancer patients has been reported in numerous studies. Cancer-related cognitive impairment, CICI, is the most frequent complication reported by breast cancer patients. Zilbefab first introduced the concept of chemotherapy-related cognitive impairment in 1983. CICI is known as chemobrain or chemofog. Despite glamour phraseology, such impairment is associated with of other therapeutic approaches and neoplasms themselves. These disorders are often transient, usually mild to moderate. They appear during or shortly after treatment with gradual improvement over time after treatment ends. In most cases, breast cancer patients seldom anticipate that they will have to deal with CRCI during the illness trajectory of cancer. This unexpected event leads to frustration and embarrassment. The incidence of CRCI in adult non-CNS tumor patients is about 17 to 70%, and it has even reached 75% in breast cancer. From them, cognitive complaints are reported by greater than or equal to 50%, but only 15, 25% uh, have objective cognitive decline on formal neuropsychological testing. The incidence of CRCI is related to the treatment modality and duration, tumor type, neuropsychological tests performed, and the definition of impairment used. There's a dose-response relationships in which patients demonstrated a linear worsening of CICI with each cycle of chemotherapy. The disorder is characterized as deficit in areas of cognition, including perception, understanding, thinking, memory, attention, language, learning, concentration, reasoning, problem solving, action planning and executive function, usually these areas are called domains. Cognitive changes in cancer patients may be induced by cancer treatment or by the presence of cancer in cells. Moreover, several factors may contribute to the development of CRCI, such as age, patient's own factors, e.g. cognitive reserve, anemia, DNA damage and genetic predisposition, psychological and social demographic factors. The largest longitudinal prospective clinical studies to assess cognition in cancer patients found that soon after diagnosis and prior to any chemotherapy, 43% of colorectal cancer patients had cognitive impairment compared with 15% of non-cancer controls. In addition, 46% of survivors reported impairment 12 months later compared with 13 of controls in breast cancer patients a significant cognitive decrease was detected shortly after chemotherapy followed by partial recovery one year after this treatment however 15 to 45 percent of survivors experience sustained cognitive symptoms which are often associated with fatigue depression and anxiety a number of studies finding more impairment in survivors who have received chemotherapy. This impairment include memory, executive functions, vocabulary fluency, processing speed, and response time. The long-term toxic impact of treatment on neurological function is an important issue in terms of life quality in relation to autonomy, return to work, social relationships, and self-confidence. Three quarters of respondents Reported cognitive symptoms impacted their ability to return to work. Attention and executive function are the domains most impaired post chemotherapy. Hormone therapies can also lead to a CICI and the combined treatment of tamoxifen and chemotherapy leads to greater difficulties than chemotherapy alone. Radiation therapy also contributes to CICI that presents with verbal memory damage. However, these effects and Increased inflammatory markers are not as severe as with chemotherapy. Magnetic resonance imaging revealed 
morphological changes in the brain structure of patients after chemotherapy, such as insular, bilateral hippocampal gyrus, left anterior cingulate cortex, decreased gray matter volume, and damage to white matter integrity. The hippocampus and gray matter are related to attention, learning, memory, and other cognitive domains. The pathophysiological mechanisms underlying It has been shown that cytostatic agents from different classes, e.g. antimetabolites, DNA crossing linking agents and alkylating agents administered peripherally and in clinically relevant procedures directly impact the nervous system. Chemotherapy regimens disrupt various biological processes and suppress cell division in an absolute manner. Thus, adult neural stem cell proliferation and neurogenesis can be affected together with malignant cells. Specifically, many cytostatic agents appear to be preferentially toxic to neural progenitor cells, the direct, direct ancestors of all differentiated cell types in the CNS and postmitotic oligodendrocytes, the myelin farming cells. This damage is correlated with reduced adult hippocampal neurogenesis, AHN, in the adult brain, neurogenesis is involved in memory formation. It occurs within the hippocampus that's one of the only brain regions of continued neural stem cell proliferation throughout the lifespan. This region is also critical for memory consolidation and function, spatial processing, attention, learning, and optimal cognitive state as a whole. Herewith, the hippocampus is specifically damaged by not on chemotherapeutics, but also inflammatory cytokines. Cyclophosphamide also inhibits DNA synthesis and increases oxidative stress, destroying the mitochondria. Such disorders induce behavioral deficits that are inversely correlated with neurogenesis. Therefore, the chemotherapy can act directly off on AHN by decreasing hippocampal cell proliferation and neurogenesis, or indirectly by promoting an inflammatory environment that's not optimal for neurogenesis. Indirect toxicity is customary to associate with metabolic abnormalities, oxidative stress caused by tumor itself, treatment, etc. Microvascular diseases and alterations of endothelial cells resulting from blood-brain barrier, BBB permeability, trigger microenvironment changes within the brain. Reduced white matter integrity and impaired neurogenesis are also postulated in important mechanisms underlying the typical pattern of CRCI. Such as agents may promote persistent neuroinflammation, which in turn is involved in changes on, in myelination and cognitive dysfunction. Inflammatory concept of CRCI pathogenesis is based on the assumption that malignancy and system treatments such as chemotherapy induce inflammation in the body with, which is then propagated to the brain via well-characterized pathways of immune to brain signaling. Chemotherapy drugs, the human self and the patient's long-term physiological and psychological stress can lead to increased production of inflammatory cytokines such as human necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha, interleukin-1, IL-1, and interleukin-6, IL-6. These cytokines entering the brain through the BBB causes a local inflammatory response in the brain, which also leads to the ruination of the structure and integrity of the BBB and epigenetic changes. Your inflammation then regulates mood, cognitive, and behavioral changes associated with CRCI. It was proved expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines to be increased in the tumor microenvironment, plasma or serum, and hippocampus that's damaged with inflammatory cytokines, as mentioned above. The volume of hippocampus is um, in the breast cancer group receiving chemotherapy was re relatively low and was associated with higher TNF alpha levels and lower IL6 levels, providing a basis for inflammatory cytokine mediated CRCI. In addition to hippocampal dysfunction, increased Cytokines caused 
by chemotherapy appear to be associated with disruption of neuroplasticity. Both increased peripheral cytokine levels and hippocampal IL-1, IL-6, and TNF-alpha are associated with reduced neurogenesis, disrupted hippocampal stem cell function, and cognitive impairment, namely memory performance. Association between circulating cytokines and aspects of cognitive function in breast cancer patients during and after treatment were evidence. The functional connectivity of brain network was also affected after chemotherapy. These disorders in the anterior cingulate cortex are associated with executive function and might also be the pathological basis of CRCI. Reduced hormone levels may cause CRCI. Surprisingly, multiple studies have shown that impaired cognitive function areas such as speech memory, vocabulary, fluency, and decision-making function appear after breast cancer patients undergo endocrine therapy. Estrogen and testosterone have neuroprotective and antioxidant functions. Estrogen even has a certain effect on maintaining telomere length. Cancer patients with long-term stress stimulate the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis to activate excessively, increasing the cortisol secretion, which triggers damage to the brain structure and function, including hippocampus. Such elevated levels in cancer patients could be predictors of cognitive impairment. There is evidence that dehydroepiandrosterone change in response to acute and chronic stress and affect synaptic plasticity and neurogenesis. The therapy levels of uh, this substance and its sulfated form were positively correlated with verbal fluency and mental activity. Several genetic polymorphisms are related to the cognitive function. The polypoprotein E, a E, mainly plays a role in lipid metabolism. It, E4 allele is associated with neuronal repair and plasticity. There is evidence that E4 allele of a PO increases the risk of cognitive decline. Psychological well-being is easily threatened in life-limiting illnesses such as cancer. While the association of psychological variables with physical and mental health has been studied widely, it hasn't been studied in relation to cognitive health in breast cancer patients. Anxiety could play a role in increasing the level of CRCI. Patients who scored lower on neuropsychological tests reported more symptoms of anxiety. Depression can be de described as a state of feeling sad and hopeless. The patients with, with negative and depressed mood gave lower scores on self-reported intentional function. Depressed mood could be associated with the severity of patient's CRCI. Depression negatively influences the changes in the patient's executive function and is also identified as a predictor of the progression of CRCI. Stress is described as a sense of feeling overwhelmed Patients with lower scores from measuring immediate memory, memory, delayed memory, verbal fluency, and attention demonstrated high scores on stressed newly diagnosed breast cancer patients performed poorly on objective tests when they suffered high psychological distress. They more often reported self-perceived CRCI when their distress was high. Three ways of CRCI diagnosis in detail, which are self-reported cognitive complaints, neuropsychological scale, and imaging findings. Self-reported cognitive symptoms correlate with objective assessment, although these correlations are often vague. These symptoms appear to be more strongly associated with effective symptoms, either depression and anxiety, insomnia, coping and adjustment issues, and cancer-related fatigue. Neuropsychological assessment provide objective parameters of cognitive domains. They are a snapshot in time whereas self-report measures typically ask about experiences over a period of time. Because CRCI symptoms can come and go, they aren't always detected by objective neuropsychological assessment, especially subtle changes. Therefore, survivors often report cognitive problems but score in the normal range on neuropsychological testing. This highlights the importance of comprehensive assessment of cognitive and emotional function. Given our increasing awareness of the potential adverse effects of many cancer therapies on brain and cognition, methods for predicting which 
patients are at highest risk are not only feasible, but may also help prevent long-term disability. Neuroimaging is increasingly used to aid the prediction of outcomes for various brain-based disorders, including future cognitive decline. Based on the clinical research literature, possible approaches with the most promised today include cognitive rehabilitation, physical activity, uh, and acetylcysteine and other drugs. Cognitive rehabilitation is considered a well-established treatment to address cognitive impairments. Cognitive rehabilitation is a systematically applied set of medical services designed to improve cognitive functioning and participation in activities and that may be affected by difficulties in one or more cognitive domains. Further, the services are designed to enhance cognitive abilities, particularly as it relates to improving functional independence and life quality. Cognitive rehabilitation is based on principles of neural plasticity and functional reorganization with two impaired cognitive, uh, two main underlying mechanisms, retraining and functional compensation. Retraining strengthens impaired cognitive skills through repeatedly practicing cognitive tasks, whereas functional compensation focuses on honing strategies to modify the environment and or one's approach to achieve a goal. Imaging studies also suggest that survivors employ compensatory activation of additional brain regions to maintain performance of neuropsychological tests. These two interventional approaches are often combined with compensation be particularly appropriate for treating persistent cognitive impairments. Cognitive rehabilitation typically is informed by a neuropsychological assessment and implemented in three phases, acquisition, education about cognitive vulnerabilities and strength, and beginning to learn possible compensatory strategies. The second, application, applying to learn compensatory strategies in stages toward mastery. And third, adaptation, applying prior learned skills with enhanced complexity to aid functional improvement. Results from epidemiological studies showed that regular exercises and physical activity reduce cancer risk and mortality. The A is also associated with improved cognitive function. In healthy adults, executive functions show the largest and most consistent exercise-related increases, while improvements in memory and other cognitive skills have been less reliable thus far. The A increases neurogenesis and the levels of neurotransmitters and neurotrophins that promote cognitive function, it reduces inflammation, stimulates positive brain vasculatory changes, reduction of psychological and chronic medical conditions, e.g. fatigue, depression, sleep disruption, diabetes, obesity, lymphedema, and incontinence associated with PA also indirectly improve cognitive function and lead to increased life quality. PA is also believed to moderate the signaling pathways involved in neuroprotection, such as increasing the expression of neuroprotective genes. In addition to all benefits named about and independently of cancer, the age and exercise are known to have positive effects on structural adaptions of the CNS. Acute aerobic exercise leads to increased expression of neurotrophic and neuroprotective factors, such as brain drive, neurotrophic factor, the vexillary is endothelial growth factor. These growth factors mainly contribute to a process called neurogenesis in specific brain regions, especially in the hippocampus as highly evolutionary conserved structure. Interestingly, the hippocampus is degenerated by the cause of neurodegenerative disorders. Indeed, many studies reveal that exercise-induced neurogenesis is accompanied by the, an increased hippocampus volume as well as enhanced functioning of hippocampus-dependent cognitive abilities. Positive effects of exercise are not limited to hippocampus-dependent cognitive abilities. For example, improved performance of higher prefrontal located cognitive skills such as executive function, attention, response inhibition, cognitive flexibility, planning, etc., is frequently reported after exercise. Repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, uses magnetic fields to modulate neuronal excitability. During this procedure, 
a GMS coil is suspended over a specific area of the head to deliver short electromagnetic pulses. The technique is currently improved for the treatment of depression, but it's also being investigated as a means of improving cognitive performance. Positive effects on memory and attention impairment have been documented in other populations. Mecapto ethan and sulfonate and acetyl cysteine or melatonin can prevent oxidative stress associated with chemotherapy and may also be a direction for CICI prevention. Melatonin is physiological sleep re regulator secreted mainly by the pineal gland. Randomized, double blinded, placebo can control trial demonstrated the neuroprotective effect of melatonin on the neuroplasticity process. It may offset the cognitive function decline, impaired sleep quality, and depression symptoms of breast cancer patients during adjunct chemotherapy. Antioxidant and acetylcysteine alter the cognitive de deficit mainly by reversing mitochondrial dysfunction, preventing free radical production, reducing hippocampal neuroapoptosis, and dendritic spinal loss. A reversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, donabazil, is commonly used in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease patients. It has a positive effect on the cognitive function, especially speech memory of cancer patients after chemotherapy. Methylphenidate, a dopaminergic and noradrenergic agonist during investigation of its efficacy of in cancer-related fatigue patients, cognitive functions such as speech, learning, memory, visual perception, or scaling speed period to be significantly enhanced. The CNS stimulant modafinil improved memory and attention to be survivors in breast cancer survivors. Aspirin is known to have anti-inflammatory properties. Since inflammatory factors are involved in CRCI, can anti-inflammatory drugs be used to treat CRCI? The scientists tested them and found that aspirin could prevent but not effectively reverse the cognitive damage. A diet rich in long chain, omega-3 fatty acids and low sugar content could protect neurons from the toxic effects of chemotherapy through preventing or reducing urine inflammation and oxidative stress. Novel treatment strategies for cognitive dysfunction in cancer survivors are emerging with the increasing knowledge on the underlying molecular mechanism. Management of CRCI should be incorporated into clinical practice as for patients with neurodegenerative disease. Thank you for attention.